It's April in Brooklyn. Let's go. Tyson, we brought you a lamb. We're so excited to smoke this thing because not a lot of people actually have had smoked lamb before, but it's so freaking delicious. We of course here smoke whole pig, so that's kind of our stick, but like, you know, whole animals as a barbecue genre is underexplored. It is the oldest style of cooking barbecue in this country, and it's indigenous to Eastern North Carolina, which is the style we practice. All right, we're gonna toss this bad boy in the smoker, but um, can you show me how to cut this thing first? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. And that's how you butterfly a lamb. We've been using the word butterflying, but just to clear it up, that, that just means laying it flat. So it'll cook a little bit more evenly. It'll also go a little bit faster just because it's opened up. Gets more smoke, everybody's happier. The reason lamb is so expensive is it's only this line in the middle and this half that anyone eats. Mm -hmm. Nobody seems to want the shoulder, and especially in America, no one seems to want the saddle. Why are we and, um, cutting uh, behind the H bone or kind of the, the yeah, pelvic bone here? The first reason is we want this to cook a little faster. In any animal, the, the legs are gonna always cook slower than the shoulders. We wanna speed this thing up um, so that it's matching the cook time with the shoulders. And plus, I like having this little pocket so that our marinade can get in there. Cool. Well, I guess someone's gonna get a little, a little sinew in their teeth today. That's fine. That's totally fine. This is episode sponsored by Floss. Just floss. <laughs> now that our lamb's all butterflied, we're gonna throw a little mustard on it. The reason people don't like lamb is because of that gamey taste associated with it, but that taste is, is not indigenous to lamb, it's coming from the oxidation of the meat. And so traditions rub mustard all over the meat because mustard is an antioxidant, and that actually keeps the, the lamb from uh, getting too much of that gamey flavor. And plus it helps our um, seasoning stick. It wasn't our seasoning that so we're putting So this is on. a kind of um, Indian-inspired uh, one. There's garam masala, Kashmiri peppers, coriander, and a bunch of other random things. Cool. All right, let's go. All right. We're just gonna hang out here for um, about seven hours or so, and um, yeah. So wait, we're gonna hang out out here or by the bar with all the whiskey? So it's been, what, six hours now? Six, seven hours, oh no, time flies. You I would swear to God it's like a week later since all the snow is gone it's now, maybe? It's definitely a season oh, later. Yeah. We ready to look at this thing? Yeah, yeah. let's open her up. Yep, 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 yeah. Is there anything in particular that you do look for to know that it's done? Well, basically if your finger goes right through it, it's done. Okay. I mean, and the temperature at which it starts to shred is like 180, 190, right? Like yeah, that's when so it really starts pulling apart. Exactly, so we're trying to get it above above 190. This will totally fit in this doorway, right? Uh, ish. Lamb. Fuck yeah. Does this ever get old? No. no. Lamb is one of the best cuts of meat that America produces. They're all grass-fed. You know, they have to be grass-fed. They don't eat anything else. Yeah. It's unfortunate that it's so expensive, and it's largely due to our own consumption, which is why I like featuring the whole animal, because, you know, once people taste the shoulder, it really opens up their minds on, like, the fact that this is a premium cut. So a rack of lamb is $36 a pound, right. but a rack of lamb is a pound and a half, and there's two of them, and, like, that's it. So. It's $36 a pound because you're only getting two of them. You still have to sell the rest of the shoulder and the leg and the saddle and everything else in order to actually make money on it. From a barbecue guy's point of view, lamb shoulder is the best part. It's the dark meat. It has the most amount of marbling and fat and smoked. It's fantastic. This is what we in the industry call barbecue spaghetti because only when you cook the belly from a whole animal that it pulls into nice long strings the fat, that's where it's at. You would expect the tenderloin, which is the leanest cut on the animal, to be pretty dry, but it's pretty juicy to me. I thought it was just gonna be like dry and like leathery and kind of gross, but it's actually 
you're right, it's pretty pretty moist and Yeah, I mean, the leg is very difficult to cook. It's a different texture, it's definitely leaner. I prefer the fattier piece, that's still fantastic. Right, and so to make Carolina barbecue, everything needs to be mixed together. A little bit of the uh, the shoulder, a little bit of the, the ham, and then everything else in between. Okay. So you're getting a mixture of both fat and lean, different textures, different flavors, and all in one unified bite. So the idea of it being the, the whole is better than the sum of uh, its parts. So we're gonna tear this whole thing apart? Yeah, we're gonna get a big ass bowl and we're gonna just take all the meat off, dump it in the bowl and um, season her up. I need to know more about how a guy from Queens gets into a specific region's barbecue. I went to go visit North Carolina. You know, I read up on the topic. It was a vinegar sauce and, you know, the, they cooked a the whole hog. I was like, all right, I'll give it a go. I didn't think I would like it because, like, who wants to eat a bunch of pork all drowned in vinegar? But I went there, took my first bite of whole hog barbecue and said, all right, well, I think I found the style I want to do. It's hard to do Carolina barbecue without getting deep into the history of it. You know, one of the things we're doing in preserving this old style of barbecue is keeping barbecue as a celebratory action, especially when we tie in with the fact that the original pitmasters of this country were slaves, African-American slaves. Yeah. And barbecues were always the end of the harvest season uh, traditions of uh, which they were able to finally celebrate. To gloss over that, I think is a big disservice to American history, which is why today we're actually gonna be cooking a kind of celebratory dish. We're cooking a biryani, which is, you know, usually used for weddings and parties and birthdays. It is one of those things, the more you start like learning about the history of something, especially with barbecue in the South, like the more complicated it gets. You're not gonna untie any of those knots. You're just gonna find more. Yep. So much of that narrative is is really kind of lost now unless you really look for it and you really pay attention to it. The style is kind of dying out. So for whole hog barbecue, there's only 20 uh, restaurants um, st in the U.S. still doing this style of barbecue. Really? Yeah. So only 20. We are one of 20. Really? Holy which shit. is kind of sad. Now that we got all our meat pulled, we're gonna um, season her up. It's Carolina barbecue joint. So of course, apple cider vinegar. Put a little bit of lime juice. Vinegar, 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 vinegar. Yep. And of course, there's vinegar and pepper. You know, it's a fine thing of what pepper, so we're using some sambal today. And you can never go wrong with Thai fish sauce. We're gonna break and mix. The, the vinegar pepper sauce, you know, in my opinion, it's kind of embedded in the human genome. It is the single best way of eating meat. When you go around the world, you look at the cultures like the Philippines, and Vietnam, and Thailand. The mixture of vinegar and chilies is the, the single best way of highlighting fatty meat. Yeah, yeah, we were we were not the OGs of that. Like that was. Yeah, no, every, no, but every culture figured out figured out the same thing. And I think you know, despite the fact that we're using a Malaysian chili, we're, despite the fact that we're using a Thai fish sauce, this is Carolina barbecue. This is a continuation of the traditions that were handed down. This is the way you're cooking it. That I think is endlessly fascinating in a conversation that doesn't happen often enough, enough is this can still be one thing and be other things too. Right. It doesn't have to just be like one way or the highway. Like you're still continuing on that tradition of cooking this way, but you know what tastes good is lime juice and fish sauce. Yep. <laughs> I think we're done. Cool. What we have here is kind of a Thai style biryani. When I was thinking through a lamb biryani, I really wanted biryani to be part of the American lexicon, uh, the same way that it has now become part of the Thai lexicon. This is not an Indian dish. It's not a Thai dish. It's um, definitely an American dish. By cooking the entire animal and mixing it all, t all together, the quality is consistent. There's that impression, there's that sense of occasion. Better meat, more diversity of meat, price goes down for everybody. Yeah, we're pro-diversity here. Yeah, yeah, everybody wins, <laughs> everybody wins. Oh man, that's really good. It's good. The cinnamon and the rice and the saffron just works so well with that smoke and that vinegar. Oh my God. I think the best thing is that, you know, you're used to the flavor of smoked pork. Like, you've had ribs and bacon, yeah. and you usually have lamb, either as a lamb chop or a lamb stew, but combining those things, it tastes brand new. Tyson, you didn't tell me it was gonna be this good. <laughs> Sorry. So now that we've all eaten this, we should probably invite some friends over to help us with all this. Yeah, I mean, uh, the uh, we might need a few extra hands on that one. Okay. And we can call them in.
For more episodes just like this, click right here. So today we are going to produce the uh, Gramercy Tavern beef and pork kielbasa. Cool. With cheese. It is probably the